All right, so I think you got the idea. So, um, so here's how I'd like you to show this on your homework. And if this happens to pop up on an exam next week, um, you can do this on the exam also. Um, so here's, here's our initial graph and markings. So we're going to mark tentative distances. And I'm, I'm going like this, but you can do it on multiple pages if you want. Um, so we're going to start off, we're going to visit node A. Okay, because that's where we're starting from. We're going from A to F. And we're going to relax distances from A. So the distance from here is 2. And I'm, I'm going to write down the whole path here, just, just to show you a different way to do it. So I'm going to say the path to A plus B. Okay, so that's an AB, and I'll mark this off, and I'll say this is a distance 3, and the path is AC. All right, at this point, if I circle my closest node, now it's unclear when I circle that relative to finding these distances and so on. So at this point, go ahead to a new diagram. Okay, so we've got A circled. I forgot to label my vertices. So this was 2AB, and this was 3AC, and these were infinity. And go ahead and visit this and relax distances from there. So 2 plus 2 is 4, and the path is AB followed by E, and 2 plus 5 is 7, and the path is AB followed by D. All right, now I'm going to want to visit the node that's closest to A, which is going to be this one right here. But if I circle that on this picture, then when somebody's grading this, right, they can't tell, did you circle this first, or did you circle this first, or did you circle them both at the same time, or did you just circle everything because it seemed like the right thing to do. So go on to a new copy of this. And so it's going to take a bit of writing to do all this. but it keeps the results cleaner. So now our closest node is C, so I'm going to circle that. And I'm going to relax distances from there. So 3 plus 5 is 8, and the path is A, C, E. And that's the only thing we can relax. Oh, that's not shorter, so we're not going to relax that. We're going to leave that as 4, A, B, E. 3 plus 5 is 8, don't relax it. So the only thing we do in step three is we visit AC and there's no relaxation to do and then go on. So this should all be marked zero A. This is three AC, that's visited. This is two AB, that's visited. This is seven ABD. This is four ABE. This is infinity. So now we visit this and we relax distances. 4 plus 1 is 5, that's better, so this is 5 A, B, E, plus this vertex D. This is 4 plus 4 is 8 A, B, E, F. Right, and we have a path to F now, but we're not done, right, because we know we're going to get a better solution in the end. So the next thing I want to do is visit node D, so make another copy. That's visited. 3AC, that's visited. 2AB, that's visited. 5ABED is our new visited node. And 8ABEF. And now relax nodes from 5. 5 plus 2 is 7. So there's A, B, E, D, and F. And then we'll make a copy it over our last time, right? But if you wanted to complete this, you'd make one more copy here and you'd circle 7 with A, B, E, D, F. And once it's circled, you know that's your shortest path, or a shortest path. Okay, so I think everybody's got this. So, so do this on your homework. I will grade this one, but do the other problems as well. If you just turn in this one, you're going to lose like a point for all the problems, each of the problems you didn't turn in. So at least try those other problems and turn them in. 
Okay. Now, um, one thing we didn't encounter on this is what if there's a choice of nodes? What if as we're doing this, this also turned out to be a distance of three, right? How would we choose which one to visit next? Doesn't matter, okay? You can do either one. And it may be that there is more than one shortest path, or it may be that if you visit this other one first, eventually something will cause that to not be part of the final path you take. But if there's two or more nodes that are the same distance, you can pick either one you want. And that's when my answer key starts bifurcating in a binary tree and I get like 64 answer keys. <laughs> Make sense? And this is a useful algorithm, right? I've had students who do service learning projects where there are, one student was, was trying to come up with a, an optimal pathway to get from class to class. Help students figure out, you know, I got this class here and I gotta go to that building over there. What's the best way to do that? And ended up using Dijkstra's algorithm to, to find shortest paths in a graph and actually walk from building to building with a little meter handheld thing that measured distances and came up with their own map. Pretty cool. All right, how'd you like the SLP yesterday? Good experience? I got, I'm thinking if you wanted to improve the sighting thing, um, because the problem was that people, um, I'm thinking maybe if you needed less signatures, people would use less tricks to get signatures mm -hmm. and do it more honestly because it takes much work. Yeah. Um, so how would we do that though? Well, I just have less signatures on the page. So oh. people wouldn't spend the whole time trying to get signatures and present instead. That's true. That's true. The downside is that if, if people are fixated on getting signatures, then they're only going to visit, you know, five tables instead of 20 or 25. And, you know, hopefully people are going around and talking to other groups because they're interested in it. But sometimes, it, you know, all I have to do is visit five tables. So you just visit the five right next to you and then you're done. I mean, I saw people there who weren't even part of the presentation team, but they were doing just two projects. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, this might not work at all, but you could give like 10 random booths star stickers to get out instead of signatures. So That's true, and you have to go find them. But that relies on people not being like, I have a booth with the stickers. So yeah. Give them or just walking by and seeing like if yeah, someone has a sticker there. there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's I, mean, I mean, possibly the best solution is. is um, you know, I could require you to write an essay on each booth that you visited or something like that, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah? What if you just had a sign-in sheet for when they got there, and then for the extra credit, a sign-in sheet at the end so that you knew they stayed the whole time? And didn't well, I've thought about doing that, um, but that's, that's sort of a separate issue, right? And most people stayed the whole time last night, which was great. Um, that's a separate issue of people coming in and then disappearing early. Um, from from wanting people to go around and talk to other groups. I thought that's why you had the signature sheet was to make sure people didn't just come in and be account by. No, um, that's usually not a problem. Yeah. Um, as long as people know ahead of time that it's a two-hour thing, most people seem to be happy to stay or willing at least. You can make the signature that's longer, and then every booth has them instead of the people having them. So each booth turns in their list of who came and visited and listened to each field and signed the day. Showed up and listened. That would that be cool. Way, it would be more annoying to count, but you'd be able to count uh, everybody's name. So if Stephen went to five different booths and signed his name five different times, yeah. When you get all those back, his name should be. That's a good idea. Yeah. Or just compare the sign in list to like each booth mm -hmm. sheet, and it should have an equal amount of people on the whole sheet. Yeah. If everyone went to, went to every booth. Oh, that my word though is trying to interpret people's handwriting. <laughs> oh yeah, there is that too. Um, yeah, or we could make an app. For, someone for their SLP could make an app <laughs> that each booth can use. <laughs> right. Yeah. What if everyone had an NFC 
chip reader. Yeah. Had an chip. We can chip you at the beginning of the quarter. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> it's a little footnote on the, the syllabus. <laughs> right. The ratio between walking around here and presenting field lights is all. You're doing too much walking around? Yeah. Yeah. I had no time to work. So, so we've done this in the past when more people were working in groups, and that tended oh, to work well, because one person would be at the table, someone would walk around, and they switch off. And over the years, people have been working more and more in groups of one. And I'm not sure what's, what's causing that. Um, but, yeah, okay, all, all good feedback, thank you. Um, all right, so um, I will see you tomorrow. We'll go over a review sheet for 2.15, and we'll also go over the homework. I saw last night. I saw somebody.